Hi and welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm Simon and today I'm back with my November book haul. So some of the books that I got sent by publishers and all the books that I bought myself in November. This will actually be the last book haul on my channel this year. I have been planning my December and January content and the slots are all full two a week and so <laughs> all the extra content like my December book haul that can't fit into December and January because other stuff's going on is going to be on my Patreon along with all of my festive sort of vlogmasy content this year. Not a vlog a day but there will be weekly festive delights a coming so I'll link my Patreon down below. I'm not planning on doing masses of book shopping in December that said however I am going to be a bookseller in one of my favourite bookshops and I think the likelihood of me not coming away with quite a lot of books is very, very slim. So you can find out how I get on with that or not in my December book haul over on Patreon, along with all my blog and see stuff and other regular extra content that I do there. But again, because there were a few comments when I mentioned this, I am still going to be doing two videos a week on this channel. Right, more on the bookshop later. That's all the admin done now, I think, so let's get cracking. And first up, a finished copy of a book that I have shared on the channel before, and that is Happiness Falls by Angie Kim. Now, I actually don't know what this is about. For those of you who've been around a while, you'll know I'm not a big fan of blurbs. I like to go into a book just on a sort of vague idea of what the book's about. In this case, I know it's a literary thriller. And actually, I have not read many literary thrillers this year, and I really, really love them when I read them. So that's something that I would like to head to more and I am at the moment thinking a lot more about like what I would like to read next year but also what I just want to read for the rest of this year. Literary thrillers may well be on there. This is out in January and I've heard lots of buzz about this in America already so very excited for it. A book that I have already read is The Orange and Other Poems by Wendy Cope. Now I had no idea that The Orange had gone viral on TikTok. I've been a fan of Wendy Cope's poems for years. I think since possibly my late teens because my mum used to read quite a lot of them and she's got many a favourite, a few of which are in here because this is actually an anthology of some of her previously published poems. It just happens that The Orange has gone bonkers and I'd actually forgotten about The Orange and then watched loads of people's TikToks on it and just was like, oh actually it is, it's a really lovely poem. As are all the other ones in here. There are a few about love in here that I just, well, love. So I'll talk about this a little bit more in my November wrap-up, but a big fan of. One of my most anticipated books of 2024 is this. This is the Proof Edition of Enlightenment by Sarah Perry. Now all I know about this is one, that it's out in May, uh, two, <laughs> that it's about astronomy and the stars. Three, it's about human nature, and I think four, a look at sexuality and queerness, I think. So I'm really, really, really intrigued for this one. I absolutely loved The Essex Serpent. It's one of my absolute favourite, favourite, favourite books. Really, really intrigued for this one. As I am, this debut from Lottie Jess. This is This Love, and this is an extraordinary friendship, a future that almost never was, and it's a joyfully sweeping novel about fate, family, and love outside the lines. That, to me, is the perfect blurb, actually, because it's just really short, as is this quote on the cover. This is not a love story, it's a story about love. And, full disclaimer, I know Lottie Jeffs of old because I used to be a journalist and do travel features as well as be the showbiz columnist for a queer magazine. And when I would go out on these press trips around Europe, sometimes Lottie would also be on those trips. She is fabulous. This is out in February. I'm yeah, very, very excited for it. As I am, Hexton by Sinead Gleason. And I absolutely loved Sinead's memoir, which was called, why can I not remember previous books at the moment? No, it doesn't say. Anyway, I really, really loved it. I've had the pleasure of meeting Sinead. We have known each other since my blogging days, and we're talking like 2007. I have that extra invested interest because I love her and I've loved watching her career grow, as I have with Lottie. And this sounds incredible, it says, the sea is steady for now, the land readies itself, what can be done with the women on the cliff? It just sounds like it's gonna be a bit sinister. I love this cover, I think it is ridiculously wonderful. And this is out in April. I'd, I'd specifically ask for Hagstone, but very kindly, the Fuck at Fourth Estate also let me request three other books of which two have arrived, one is coming separately. The first of which is Experienced by Kate Young, 
like with um, some of these, they're proof, so they're not in finished copy finery. So I will show you them again at some point, like I did with the Angie Kim, because I think that proof was, yeah, didn't look anything like the finished copy, which I do find an odd thing with publishing, but that's a whole different thing. And I'm talking about Kate Young's debut. Kate has previously written cookbooks and her cookbooks are based around food that can be found in literary masterpieces or classics or children's books and I have her Christmas one I've never cooked anything out of it but maybe that is something that I could do for vlogmas I haven't actually got my Christmas books out of the attic or my Christmas jumpers yet even though the tree is up and decorated in its baubly best what's this about I don't actually know but because I love Kate's food writing, I was thinking, well, I'm going to really, really enjoy her novel. And it does say on the back, the sexiest, most romantic debut novel of 2024. And this will be out in May. Another book that I think is out in May. And again, I don't know much about it. When I say that I don't know much about this book, I kind of do a little bit because it's a book that I saw a lot of people on Instagram go bonkers about after they went to the Fourth Estate Proof Party that I couldn't go to. However, I will be at the next one. I can go to Proof Parties as part of Story House for work now, which is very exciting. This is Evenings and Weekends by Ozin McKenna. I hope I've said that right, but I feel like I haven't. And it's set in London in 2019 and we follow four different people. We've got Maggie, who's 30, pregnant and broke. Then we have Ed, who wants to settle down with Maggie, but she doesn't know that he's got a secret history. And then Phil, his best friend, hates his office job and has fallen in love with his housemate, Keith. And then we have Rosalind, who's Phil's mother, who has cancer and is coming to London to tell Phil about it. So there's quite a um, concoction of relationships in there. And I think that's gonna be just my kind of thing. So really, really looking forward to that. As I said, that's out in May. Oh, I forgot to say, with Lottie's book, came Winter Animals from the Lovely Folk at Dialogue Books. And this is by Ashani Lewis. And this is the sort of perfect blurb for me because it's a quote from the book, but it doesn't give too much away. So this is what I wish all blurbs were kind of like, because it says the mountain is huge and histories collect under it. Bend was a crossing point before it was a settlement, before it was a logging town, before it was an outdoor sports destination, but everywhere's always only a crossing point. That's where they found her. That just does exactly what I want. It's just a little tease that gets me super intrigued. And this will be out in February. And it's their lead UK debut um, for Dialogue Books. So there we have that one. Then the lovely folk at John Murray sent me Cinema Love by Jia Ming Tang. And this is a queer story set in Chinatown in New York, I think. Um, and it's an old cinema, which is also a theatre where gay men cruise. It says for love. That isn't all gay men were cruising for in those places, and I believe it still goes on now. Shocking. <laughs> but yeah, this is just going to be a queer book of, well, I was going to say delight, but I'm going to say delicious possible deviancy and delight. There we go. I'm looking forward to getting to this one really, really soon. I think it's also about the films that they play in the cinema. So yeah, really, really, really intrigued for this one, Cinema and Queerness. Then another book that... I have seen quite a lot of buzz about and the lovely folk at um, Hutchinson Heineman have sent me is The Tower by Flora Carr. Um, it says The Tower is a tri triumphant story of desire, grit, God-given power and wiles from a striking new voice in historical fiction and it's set in 1567 as three women cross a lock and it says they are imprisoned but not contained. I'm just really intrigued for this one, so very much looking forward to getting to it. I asked for the next book. Oh, and I should say that is out in March 2024. I love it when they put the dates on the sides because I like to have my proofs for the year in date order, and that's really, really helpful. I should have said that Cinema Love is in out in May 2024. Goodness, this is lovely to have that way. You can, oh, oh, out in February next year is a book that I requested from the lovely folk at Picador. And I won't lie, it was because of the cover and the title. I just think that is such a wonderful cover. So evocative of the 1800s and the Victorian era, which is my favourite period in history. And one that, again, I've not read much of this year. And I think next year, I'm not saying that this is like my one main goal, but it's definitely one of my goals, is to really head back to the sort of fiction that I feel is really me and sort of rediscover 
the reader that I was slash am. Because I think all the different eras of our reading create the era that, the, sorry, create the reader that we are now. Anyway, that's, I'll do a whole video on that, so let's not spoil that now. This is Maud Horton's Glorious Revenge by Lizzie Pook. And yeah, London 1850, Constant Horton has disappeared. I don't need to know any more about that. There's clearly going to be some revenge in it. And I won't lie, revenge is one of my favourite things as a fictional sort of, I don't know, um, drive, really. So there we go. That says a lot about me. The Lovely Folk at Picador also sent me Whale Fall by Elizabeth O'Connor. I know nothing about this, but it's their lead British debut of 2024. It says Elizabeth O'Connor's beautiful, devastating debut tells the story of longing and betrayal sent against the backdrop of a world on the edge of great tumult. And I've seen, I think it was Elizabeth McNeil read this and absolutely rave about it. And I could be mesmerised by that for hours. This is out in April next year. And they also sent me a book that Nathan, over at Nathan's Nook, who you all know I adore, has recently mentioned on his channel. And that's Martyr by Kava Akbar. And this is coming out in March. And it's Picador's lead American debut for 2024. And it says, Sirius Shams is lost. The awful... The son, blah, 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 blah. the orphan son of Iranian immigrant Cyrus never knew his mother. She was killed when her plane was shot down in a senseless accident. All his life, Cyrus has grappled with the meaningless nature of his mother's death. Now he is set to learn the truth of her life. I think this is going to be pretty incredible. I've just got a feeling about it. The lovely folk at uh, Fairlight Press very kindly sent me this reissued quite soon on because I actually bought the so Fairlight like Press do like what I would call a normal sized paperback but they also do these really small ones and they did a small one of the old haunts by Alan Radcliffe which had this sort of slightly cartoon illustrated cover of a sort of sinister looking forest I think this is actually a much better cover and once I've read it I'll show you the two I should have done that now but I've forgotten but this is about um a man his parents have died he goes to sort out the house his partner's with him initially and then leaves and he sort of has to face what, well, the complex relationship that he had with his parents, I think, because he was queer. I'm intrigued by this one. It's also set out in the wilderness as this cover much more sort of gives the vibe of. So, um, yeah, really looking forward to getting to that one. Now, this proof is one that when it arrived, I was like, OK, that looks like it's Victorian and looks kind of gothic and my vibe. But then I suddenly saw that people were losing their shizzle about getting proofs of this on Instagram. I was like, oh, I definitely need to read it then. This is House of Shades by Leanne Dillsworth. And it's London, 1833, from King's Cross to Fitzrovia. Some secrets are best left in the dark. Again, perfect kind of blurb, because it just doesn't give away too much. It doesn't spoil anything. So I'm really intrigued. I'm trying to think. Oh, she wrote Theatre of Marvels, and I know that Elizabeth McNeil definitely told me that I should read that book, and I haven't. People were going bonkers about this one, so thank you again to um, Hutchinson and Heinemann for sending me this. This is out in May. I think I said that that was out in March. This is already out. When I went to see Laura G. McKay talk at West Kirby Bookshop, which was like ultra, ultra, that. It was ultra exciting because we don't get Australian authors over in the UK enough. And I do love me some Australian literature, as we will definitely be coming to later. When I was there, I saw Laura's publicist, Adam, and he was like, oh, have I sent you this book called Bird Life by Anna Smale? If I haven't, I must, because it's amazing. That's all I know about this. Now, well, that's not true. I did try and read Anna Smale's previous book, which was about music. And music, very like art, is something that in a book I struggle with if I can't like instantly picture it or hear it. It just doesn't quite do it for me. And so I struggled with that one a little bit. I think, was it called The Chimes? Yes, it was called The Chimes, it's there, which was, which was long listed for the booker, which is why I read it, because I used to read the book long list every year. So I'm intrigued by this. I did ask Adam if it was all about birds and he said no because I do love birds, especially raptors, and there is a raptor on the cover. I don't know anything about it, it just says a lyrical and ambition exploration of madness and what it's like to experience the world differently, which does sound very good, although 
very small font. I'm getting, as I get older, much more picky about my fonts. So penultimately from publishers, sorry, I got a little bit sidetracked by a noise outside. A book that the lovely cover designer, Greg, got Bloomsbury to send me. It was the cover that drew me in, but also the premise when he then put the blurb in, which I've now mildly forgotten. But this is West Heart Kill by Dan McDorman. And this is supposed to be a book that plays with the tropes of crime as we've seen before and love. Well, if we love crime fiction, if you don't love crime fiction, I don't know, you're gonna to wanna to pick up a crime novel that does that and then does something completely different that apparently a crime novel hasn't done before. That to me is enough to get me excited about it. And like I said, I would definitely like to head back to more crime and literary thrillers next year. Moving on to the last book from Publishers, which one that I asked for, and this is Lucy Ayrton's Things We Lose in Waves. And that cover caught my eye so much. I think that is absolutely stunning. Have I been talking this whole time and the camera's been dirty? I might check that in a second, I'll one before I start on the books that I bought myself. But this starts off just saying, Jenny's world is falling apart, Ravenspen is falling into the sea, the little town is perched on a remote cliff and every day storms are claiming more land, more homes and more livelihoods. And I think it's about a woman who left there to live in London but has gone back and is facing, I guess, her past, which was a theme from another book earlier. And again, it's something that I really, really like in fiction. It's a trope I really, really enjoy. Maybe I should do, I think I've said this many a time on this channel, maybe I should do a video on the tropes that I love and my pet peeves in books. Maybe I'll do that next year, we'll see. Uh-oh, the sun's coming. I'm gonna sort out why the camera's looking so dirty. And then I'll be back with the books. Well, it'll be literally a second view, but a few minutes for me, with the books that I bought myself. He's back. Sorry about that, you've slightly moved slightly wonkily because the sun's coming in. And also, I'm really sorry if that was a bit smudged earlier, this corner. I think it was only when the sun really came through that it was noticeable. So, as I mentioned, on two books that I bought myself in November. And the first book is one that I got on eBay and was so overjoyed to find it was untrue and that is the story of Persephone by Penelope Farmer and Graham McCallum and this is a book that I have talked about quite a few times when me and mum have done videos because this is the edition of the book that she used to read to me that she still has her copy slightly more battered than this one because three children have been read to and read it on their own <laughs> and actually my little sister came to stay and as soon as she saw this she's like oh my goodness can I go and sit and read it which you know frankly it was before bed so it was fine if it had been on the moment she'd arrived I'd be like come on now Miriam also on that note Miriam and I have filmed a video about her favourite classical myth retellings because like my mother my little sister is a classicist she's literally a mini Louise Savage Muses just called Miriam. This book, I was so thrilled to get because I've seen it for like hundreds of pounds. It was three pounds, it was an absolute bargain. And as soon as I opened it, it was so evocative. Like one, I think that this picture may be one of the reasons that I love autumn so much because, oh, that picture is just gorgeous. Oh. And then also there's other like pictures that instantly, I mean, it's a pretty dark, disturbing book actually. To be fair, Persephone is, kidnapped by Hades, king of the underworld, so it wouldn't be exactly fun. Uh, but yeah, I, I just in, went through this and just instantly was like, oh my goodness, I remember these images so well. I'm trying to find one of my absolute favourites, which I would now like as a poster. It's that one. Um, but this is just a beautiful, beautiful telling of the story of Persephone and Demeter. So thrilled, thrilled, thrilled to get that. And I have read it more than once since it has arrived in the house. I mentioned that I'm going to be a bookseller for a weekend in one of my favourite bookshops. That bookshop is Harris and Harris. I have not seen the new Harris and Harris, but I have been to the previous one. Had a fabulous time with Kate. My mum and my stepdad came with me. My mum is coming with me again because she's going to be a bookseller too. And in the evening on Saturday the 9th, we will be having like a mini lock-in and a little mini book club and lots of delightful festive treats and good old chat and ask us anythings and all that kind of stuff. The book that we're gonna be uh, talking about together, which I am gonna be reading very soon, is Mistletoe Malice by Kathleen Farrell. If you want to come along, we'll be book selling all day on the 9th, all day on the 10th, but then there are tickets to this little mini lock-in of festive joy. 
All the details can be found actually through Kate's Instagram, so I'll link that down below. I have just heard that this is a Christmas family tale with a bit of a, well, malicious twist. And also Meg Mason said, literally comfort and joy, it got me out of mourning the Cazalettes and I've heard amazing things about the Cazalette Chronicles. I still haven't read them, it's something I would possibly like to do next year. But yeah, this just seems like a fabulous festive read and one that I'm very excited for, as does the only other festive themed book that I bought in November, but I would like some suggestions of others, we'll come to that shortly. The other one that I bought, was Murder on the Christmas Express by Alexandra Benedict. I don't know what it is, but I do love books set on trains. And there is a mild irony to that, because when I get on a train, I always think I'm gonna read loads. I don't. I spend ages just staring out the window watching the world go by. But in my head, I read on them for hours. And I keep thinking, oh, when I go to Harrison Harris, it's like a six hour train journey. And I'm like, oh, loads of time for reading. I bet you I just stare out the window the whole time. This is a Christmas crime set on a train, so sounds brilliant. I would love, in the comments below, oh, let's move you around a bit so that you're not getting all of that sunny glare. Sorry, we're getting a bit more close and intimate. I'll try and move back a bit. I would really, really like your recommendations while the sun is streaming down on me of some really fab festive books, preferably ones that are kind of either full of brimming with brilliant characters or have a bit of a pacey plot because that is what I'm in the mood for but I would like to read some really festive books in the week before Christmas. I got put on to this book after I saw a trailer for the film that is coming out with Julianne Moore at the beginning of January. I can't remember the name of the film now because it's not this. I think it's Mary Ann something. But this is The King's Assassin by Benjamin Woolley, which is about George Villiers, who became one of the lovers of King James the First, apparently. And I also tried World of Books for the first time because this was really hard to get and World of Books seems to be quite an ethical way of buying books secondhand online. I'm not a big fan of this sort of bandage thing, especially because they put it upside down and I tried to pull it off and all anyway. This is non-fiction. I'm really intrigued by this. I would like to read quite a few queer non-fiction historical things next year. The, the trailer for this looks incredible. If I can find it, I'll link it down below because Julianne Moore, I just, she's one of my favourite actors anyway, but fiery also looks really, really sexy. So yeah, very excited for this one. A historical book that I had not heard about at all until the lovely Matthew Schrapper talked about it was A Quiet Tide by Marianne Lee. I won't lie, this cover is amazing. I think this is based on a true... Well, I think this is kind of faction. Is it though? A Quiet Tide is a life-examined, heartbreaking, haunting story that at last captures the essence and humanity of a long-forgotten Irish woman. So yes, I will link Matthew's video where he talks about it because he just talks about it way better than I will, having not read it yet. But it really, really made me want to read it, and so I will be. Then my sister and I went to Dead Ink Books while she was here last weekend and both came away with the same book and that is Brain Worms by Alison Rumfit, which is meant to be a really creepy horror novel. It's Alison Rumfit's second. I still haven't read her first. This is something that I definitely want to get better at next year which is if an author has a book out and I already have a book of theirs on the shelves, I'm going to try to not buy their latest book before I've read their previous one. I failed, but that's for next year. This is this year. I'm very excited to get to this at some point. I've heard amazing things. Another book that was bought because of TV slash films is Fellow Travellers by Thomas Mallon, which is a, has now been turned into a TV series on Paramount Plus. I watched the first episode of this and was hooked by it. It's really, really sexy. And also really fascinating because it's about two gay men who meet in Washington at a time where the, well, Congress is trying to find all the homosexuals within it who they seem see as deviants and want to get rid of them um, because they think that they uh, have a it's the term nefarious nature both in terms of the fact they're 
queer, but also potentially politically. And this is the novel which it is based on. And I thought, right, I want to read the novel first before I watch the rest of the series. And fortunately, it's one of those series that is dropping one episode a week. If it had been one where I could have watched the whole thing, I possibly might have because the first episode was that good. It's got him out of Bridgerton in it. So yeah, make of that what you will. Another book that I had imported, I should say, this is only available in America, but I found it on World of Books. I also found this, which is Agatha of Little Neon by Claire Luchette. This is all about a nun and Something I would like to do next year, and this is such a random idea for a theme vlog, but because I live opposite retired nuns, if nuns ever really retire, but you know what I mean, they're not living in a convent, they're living over the road from me. I would really like to read some nunnish books in 2024, and this is one of them. Very, very exciting for that. This is a bit of a tease, actually, because I think this might have sold out now, but if it isn't, I'll try to remember to link Tangerine Press below, because this is a, a pamphlet of two stories by Jen Ashworth, who, if any of you have been following my channel for a while, you'll know I am a big fan of Jen. She is a friend of mine. I think she writes incredibly, and I'm really excited for two new short stories by her. Penultimately, before a bunch of books that I ordered from Australia. The last book that I bought this month because I bought it early today, and I'm filming this on the 30th of November, is the book that has just won the Waterstones Book of the Year. It's Impossible Creatures by Catherine Rundell. I have just read The Golden Mole by Catherine Rundell, which is non-fiction, which I thought was incredible about uh, animals that are in danger of becoming extinct and how amazing they are. Non-fiction, fabulous, definitely a um, Christmas stocking, like, I was going to say filler, but actually I would say requirement for everyone this year, but I'll talk about that more in my November wrap-up. This has recently won the Waterstones Book of the Year. I saw the wonderful Will Rycroft interviewing her and just hearing her talk about it. Every time I hear her talk, I think she's incredible. Very excited for it. Some sort of fantasy, which I haven't done for ages. Now... I got a selection of books from Australia. Oh, we're getting the light again. Sunlight went do lally, so I'm going to quickly whiz through these final six books that I had imported from Australia. The first of which I saw, thanks to Charlie of Grandpa's Book Club. I really, really like his channel. I'll link it down below. I found it through the delightful aforementioned Nathan's Nook. He recommended Charlie um, Holding the Man by Timothy Conagrave and this is a classic work of non Australian non-fiction or it's an Australian classic that is non-fiction which is about Timothy and his partner um, how they met and how they then both got diagnosed with HIV and what follows on from there and I think this came out in the 80s so yeah, I'm really, really intrigued to get to this. Next up, we have question seven by Richard Flanagan. This is coming out, I think, in sort of uh, late spring here in the UK next year, but it's already out in Australia. This is non-fiction, so I'm really intrigued for this. The Narrow Road to the Deep North is one of my all-time favourite books. I actually haven't read any of his others since, even though I've got two over on the shelves there, but I was going to try and squeeze this into non-fiction, but it didn't happen. We'll talk about why that is. I kind of got a bit man-heavy on the reading front, which is very unlike me. I mean, yeah, we'll talk about, but yeah, I'm um, excited for that one. Then a book that I was gonna try and read before the end of the year, but I think this could be a good book to go into a new year with, is The House That Joy Built, The Pleasure and Power of Giving Ourselves Permission to Create by Holly Ringland. I know Holly, I adore her. I really loved her first novel, The Lost Flowers of Alice Hart. I sadly didn't get on so well with The Seven Skins of Esther Wilding, but I think this is gonna be ace, and I think this is just the thing that I'll need at the start of a new year. It's all about the joy of just creating and doing and making. And yeah, I'm really, really excited for this one. Then, this is me going against what I said I wasn't, well, I'm not going to do going forward, but this is the third novel by an author that I've always wanted to read and I've had all three of their books imported and not read any of them yet. It's God Forgets About the Poor by Peter Polities. And I think this is a look at queer lives in Australia. It's also about um, the Greek families who've moved to Australia too. So 
that whole thing that I love about where cultures come together and where they clash, I think is embodied in this. That's the gist that I've got about it. So I'm excited for that one. These stickers are normally really good, easy to come off. Phew, no books were harmed during the making of this video. Um, so next up is, I've <laughs> just taken the sticker off, Stone Grey Devotional by Charlotte Wood. I already have a proof of the UK edition and I actually think we've got a better cover. However, I am becoming a bit of a Charlotte Wood completionist and do have Australian and UK copies of her previous two books. So I wanted to make that happen with this one. I also have a lot of her Australian books that haven't been published here on my shelves up there. But yeah, really, really excited to get to this. This is probably one that I'm gonna to get to between Christmas and New Year when I'm planning on heading to a few 2024 books before the new year begins. And then last but not least of the whole video and of that imported set of delights is Christos Chalkis' The In Between. Again, this is out in the UK next year. However, I couldn't wait, and so I've got it. But what I really need to do with quite a few import books, actually, that I've got that are due out next year is get to them before next year, because otherwise, what was the point of having them imported all the way from another country, or in the case of some, brought over from another country? Because my lovely friend, Julie, who was in my previous video, where she had an OC through my shelves and selected certain books, and we chatted about them, um, she brought me some fabulous books over from America, a few of which are out early next year. So I just need to get a wriggle on as I do with this one. This sounds really lovely. It's about two middle-aged men who meet on the internet and go on a date and it follows on from there. And there's just something really, I don't know, something about it that I just liked. So I was like, I can't wait to read that. I just can't wait, so I won't. So I'm hoping to get to that in due course. Anyway, there we go. Those are the books that I got in November. Let me know in the comments below if you read any of them. Actually, only let me know if you liked them. If you didn't like them, don't tell me because it will ruin it for me. And it's something that people seem to love to do on the internet when you're all excited about because about a book is tell you how dreadful it is and I just don't get that mentality anyway um but if you have loved some of these let me know and also let me know any of the books that you got in November that you're really chuffed about I'm gonna go before the light gets bonkers as always it's lovely catching up with all of you thank you so much for spending time with me if you would like to see more festive and just more content then head to my Instagram my Patreon and my wish list for any festive delight is down below too. I will see you in another video very, very soon. Bye. Gosh, this light. It's like I'm bookish Jesus.